My name is Matt Garland. Yeah. My name is Matt Garland. My name is Matt Garland. And I'm a lesson number 58700, better known as MG the Mortgage Guy. And my name is yeah. Kiana Watson. And my name is Kiana Watson. And my name is Kiana Watson. Yeah. Broker extraordinaire. License number 317576. Nah, this set is beautiful. I mean... We ain't gonna hold you up. <laughs> Y'all see the hat. We festive. I mean, it's the lip in the red shoe for me. It is the lip in the red you shoe know, for everybody we, we, who's watching we, this. We coordinating. We we're coordinating. You know, we always coordinate when we're not even trying to coordinate. I know, it's I love beautiful. it. It's a beautiful thing. We've got the gold on, got the red. The set is looking beautiful. Shout out to the whole team. The whole team put this together. Absolutely. You know, we're in the holiday spirit, and it is just exciting that we've made it to the end of the year. Yeah, look, we started this in June. Now it's the holiday. Season one is coming to an end, yeah. and it's been an amazing ride. Trials and tribulations, ups and downs, good, bad, the ugly. We had live audience. We had all no types of things. It was great, man. It was, it was a great, great run, the first I, season. It was an amazing run. I can tell you, I feel like the love is there. People are loving our podcast, mm -hmm. and we're just going to keep giving more value, more information. And we just... Season two is going to be... Look, brother. season two is going to be crazy. But before we get to season two, let's... Um, kind of give you guys a recap of yeah. some of our favorite guests. Now, all of our guests are our favorite, right? But for a purpose of time, we can't <laughs> <laughs> we can't play every snippet from every guest. All right, guys. So we're gonna take a look at some of our special guests and when they fell in love with real estate. Why did I fall in love with real estate? Because you love real estate. <laughs> you got to love it. <laughs> That's a loaded. <laughs> That's loaded. Um, so I fell in love with real estate back when I was 18. I actually was working at a mortgage company. Okay. And um, I, I saw this. This top, He was a top producer. He was an a, a agent. He was a top producer. And his team just got, like, all the buzz. They were making, like, millions of dollars, essentially, back in Manhattan in New York. Ooh. And when I saw that, I was like, there's something to this real estate. <laughs> there's mm -hmm. something to this real estate. So that's how I, you know, sort of pursued my career in real estate, pursued moving up in um, the mortgage industry, and then eventually going to law school to become an attorney to practice real estate. Dope. <laughs> <laughs> what I love about this clip and the familiar story is, it's no denying that real estate is the best vehicle to generate and to create generational wealth. Absolutely, right? absolutely. That is what I'm seeing here. It's like we're seeing that common denominator, where the money resides. Everybody right? want to make money, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But look, she says she started off in the mortgage world. Shout out to all my mortgage people, right? Because right. we get into a bag, yes. and people don't even be knowing it, right? So she. I, I love the fact. I love Sabine too. Shout out to Sabine. Oh, yeah. And I, I thought this was a, a great, like 18 years old, you know, discovered the mortgage industry, which led her to the real estate industry. And, it, and now she's great. a successful real estate attorney. And like, it's it awesome. really makes her a better real estate attorney because she understands more about Absolutely. the real estate world. No, that's a fact because a lot of attorneys don't understand the transactional side of a real estate exactly. broker or or a loan officer or, or, or just the bank and how the process works. Yeah. So it makes the process a lot more streamlined when your attorney can understand everybody's roles because exactly. they, 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 they played those parts. She's just, she, that was an amazing episode. Nah, amazing Sabine, episode. you guys definitely need to check out Sabine's episode. It, For was, sure. it was phenomenal. Estate planning, one-on-one -on -one basically, because you can't have generational wealth without a, 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 a estate plan. And, and protecting your assets. So make sure y'all check out that episode and shout out to Sabine Franco. All right. All right, you guys. So we have Patrick Henderson here. Patrick and Henderson. he is an amazing luxury builder here in the Absolutely. Atlanta area. Absolutely. And what I love the most about him is he started from the bottom. He started flipping houses and he worked his way up. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us kind of get stagnant. We don't see that we, you know, there is no ceiling. Mm -hmm. And um, he's building these phenomenal modern houses here. Absolutely. And I wonder, I, I've got to remember, when did he fall in love with real well, estate? Well, let's take a look at this clip. Let's see when Patrick fell in love with real estate. Man, I fell in love with real estate 
had to be around 03, 04. Um, I just... Wow, cowboy days. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, and you knew what happened back then. <laughs> but no, that's when I really, really fell in love with real estate. You know, I have an IT background. That's where I came from, the IT world. I used to own a real uh, IT development firm. Mm -hmm. And I was flying all over the, the world, actually, doing, you know, IT projects. But real estate really allowed me to buy my own time. So mm -hmm. around that 04 time frame, I got a chance to do what I really, really loved, and that was taking something that was nothing and really transforming it. That's my favorite part. You know, freedom? Freedom. That's the key word. Freedom. Everybody it's like freedom. It's like you're starting off corporate, and everybody is always ending up saying, you know what, let me look into real estate for freedom. Yeah. If they don't get anything from this, they need to understand that real estate is going to get you, buy you some freedom. Buy your time back. It's the Underground Railroad. It is. <laughs> it's going to give you the freedom that you desire. We've got to bring with us as we possibly can. That is, that, is, that is a fact. But I love the fact, like you said, he started off in IT. Yeah. Completely different background and world from real estate. More efficient, straight to the point. Mm -hmm. You know, and he took that experience and now... You know, like you said, started off as a flipper, and now he's developing multi-million dollar Correct. luxury homes and in Atlanta. And we need to see that. Like, we need Absolutely. to see more of that because I think a lot of us, we, we always see, we can only see what's in front of us, right? Absolutely. So if you're only flipping houses, maybe you don't have a desire to do more than that, but what if you do? Mm -hmm. You need representation of someone that said, listen, I flipped houses, and I went from flipping houses to building houses, and I went from building houses to building luxury houses. Absolutely. And we had the ability to do all of it. But again, it's 2021, he started off in 03. It's time. It's, it's, time. A, it's a marathon. That's it's also a, the key thing too, right? Sabine yeah. says she started off at 18. Yeah, it's a right? marathon, it's not a race. It's Take not a time. race, it's not a race. Um, so that was great. That Patrick, was a great episode. Patrick was a great episode. If you're trying to get into development, make sure you guys check out Patrick's episode. You cannot go wrong with that one. So Absolutely now not. let's take another look um, at one of our special guests and when they fell in love with real estate. Let's see. Hey guys, so now we're going to take a look at Alexis Lee. Alexis Lee is also based here in Atlanta. Um, she's a phenomenal investor landlord and she has a great story her episode episode 13 was phenomenal so let's take a look at when alexis lee fell in love with real estate <laughs> I started buying properties in 2006. I bought my first home. Terrible transaction. I just sold it last week. Um, I had, anybody knows about those arm loans. I had a terrible arm loan, and then I lost all the value in my property. Um, I think I bought it for almost $200,000. Uh, in 2009, the townhomes were selling for $37,000. Oh, so, yeah. oh my hard. God. So, you know how that feels, right? Yes. Oh. So um, I rented it out. I stayed in it for two years. I rented it out, and I continued to do that. Like, And it wasn't like, oh, I knew everything about real estate. It was that I just couldn't be still. So I would buy a house, live in it for two years, rent it out, buy a house, live in it for two years, rent it out. And I did that four or five times. Mm. And so House I, hacking. Yeah, I really was. And I looked up, and I was like, oh, I got five houses. And I'm 20... It's still in my 20s, right? And so um, that was I did that over the course of 10 years. And then I had my daughter. Uh, we moved into a house. And I was in another industry. I sold hair. Um, I had three hair stores. We had like 36 employees. I was still working my corporate job, making six figures nice. and owning my hair stores. And I was depressed, miserable. I was broke. Mm. I had homes. I didn't have any money. Um, so I was like almost probably at rock bottom. And then somebody decided to drive a car through one of our stores to rob, pretty much rob us. Damn. And then one of my employees, um, we had security, but then somebody was coming in trying to rob. And I was just like, I can't sleep at night. Like this, something's got to give. Like I can't keep doing this. So, um, I sold my hair business to my um, business partner, so all of my shares. Um, still kept my corporate job. 
And I sold my primary residence in 2016. Me and my daughter moved into my parents' basement. I sold one of my properties. I was I had two properties then. So in 2016, I said, I'm going to do something different. I was on an auction site. Me and my family was on a vacation. And I was bidding. Did not even think I was going to win, right? Didn't think I was going to win. I won. I said, oh, shit. <laughs> just got real real right just got real 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 quick um only person i even knew with money and then i had to pay cash for it because i'm on the auction site like what was i doing right I know what I'm <laughs> uh, was my mom she said i'm gonna loan you this money and when i'm when i tell you i'm not playing in three months i better have my money back and i'm not playing with you with interest mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the interest for me. Oh, yeah. She don't play. She still don't play about her money. <laughs> Shout out to mom. Now I kind of mess with her, and I, I write up contracts in, con- in crayon and marker just to make, make her <laughs> upset because she make me write contracts, but whatever. Um, she loaned me and my dad the money. We renovated the property. It took us three weeks. I listed it because I had my license. I listed it. We got an all-cash offer. We closed seven days later, and I made $18,000. And that was the day I fell in love. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, I think this is what I might be supposed to do. Again. Freedom. 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 And on top of that, yeah. the marathon, not a race, she said it took her 10 years to it's, acquire those properties. Yeah, it took her 10 years, and she was house hacking. House hacking. Didn't even realize she was house hacking. Just was, right? just, just, she just kept moving forward. Yeah. And what the... what. I see from this is I made an, an insane amount of money uh-huh. in a short period of time and now I'm in love because now I recognize the power, the tool that this can use mm-hmm. can be to take me towards freedom. That and also she was she had a corporate job. Yes. She had other businesses besides yes. the real estate in that 10 years. And she said, you know what? I'm tired of dealing with this foolishness yes. of the hair business, people trying to rob the brick and mortar store. And she said, you know what? We're already doing real estate. Let's just go all Let's in. Let's just go all in, right? Got a loan from mama. Let me tell you. Right? Mama, mama really, was the private lender. Let me tell you, it's still the interest for me because it, yeah. it, it builds character and it shows you that you have to be responsible. Mm-hmm. And she took it seriously because her mom charged her interest. She's like, I can't play with her money. Absolutely. And she, she ain't playing And she money. said she still netted $18,000. She still did amazing. In her first deal that she tried to be an investor. Yeah. See, the other properties, the four or five properties she purchased in 10 years, it was house hacking, and, and right? But once she got that investor bug, it was more like, oh, no, wait a minute. This is where I want to be. This is where I want to be. I can control my own destiny. Exactly. So that that was awesome. That was an amazing episode. Yeah. I can't wait to see who's next. Oh Yeah, I can't wait to see who's next either. We've had some phenomenal people on this. Nah, this show. has been a vibe so far. I'm liking, I'm liking everything that's going on right here, right now. So let's get into... Another favorite, right? And this was definitely a fan favorite episode. Justin Giles. Justin's also based in Atlanta. We got a lot of ATLians on the show, Listen, Kiana. What's going on here? What about the, the rest of the country here, Listen, Kiana? This is, this is the I, point. I, I, I feel like we'd be a little favoritism <laughs> to Atlanta. ATL is where it's at. However, if you are a talented person you would like to be on the show, please reach out to our producer. <laughs> we will make sure that we vet you properly and get you on here from any place in the United States. That is, that However, is a However, this was the year of ATL. This definitely, this ATL. you know, we film here in Wakanda, so, you know, it's a little bit easier and to get guests. Yeah. Um, when we're here in Wakanda, but also a lot of people out here doing big things. Yes, we are. And Justin is definitely one of these folks, and he had an amazing episode. This is when we actually had the live audience, so it was phenomenal. The energy, the energy was on ten, was on 10. Yes. and um, Justin brought down the house, man. So let's check out this clip of when Justin Giles, episode seven, right when he fell in love. <laughs> at a technology company, but my mom was also a real estate broker. Uh-huh. So I've never worked for a big real estate company. I always worked under my mom when I did get my license. And when I was growing up and she had her license, I saw how she still made a lot of money and commissions on top of my parents having this IT company. Mm. So I literally grew up in, in the business. Okay. So it was kind of just second nature when I came out of college I and mean, I can get into that. It's a long story, but I ended up picking, getting into real estate. But I fell in love with real estate pretty much just because I kind of just like I said, I grew up in it yeah. and I saw how much money it made. And I saw that no matter what business 
another person has, they can still have passive income and actually make good money off of real estate investing. Because most people that own businesses have other incomes coming in and everybody's invested in real estate. So I said, hey, you know what? I should do real estate. This. That's right. <laughs> do real estate. So it was your parents mm -hmm. who made you fall in love with real estate. Yeah. So man, powerful. What, what was so powerful about that to me is we always hear about people starting from the bottom. I didn't have any, my parents didn't leave mm -hmm. anything, but that's not what we're working hard for. We're working hard so that way we can give our children and people behind us an elevation up, right? Absolutely. So to hear that his parents purchased property so that way him and his brother could just kind of go through college. Absolutely. And they could have that boost. That was encouraging to hear. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, look, his mother, like you said, he didn't work for a company, he worked for his mother. Exactly. When he got his license, and I thought that was important, and it's important, you know, for us right now, many of us are our parents, to have our children involved in real estate at an early age. I Let agree. them see what's going on, because that's when they're gonna fall in love, because they idolize their parents in most cases, so if they're doing something, they're gonna to wanna to do it too. So this, Justin's a prime example of that. He's a prime example that. of just, you know, and, and also making sure you pass down that information. We're always talking about passing down generational wealth, but we need to pass down generational knowledge. That is a fact. We need to be that able a to give this knowledge. Generational knowledge. Yes. I like that. Me too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> that was a gem, yeah. big gem. Everybody put Jim in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> so that yeah. was a great episode. Let me see who we have next. Nah, coming up next. That definitely was a great episode. Shout out to Justin. Make sure y'all check out that episode. Oh, yeah. And let's go. Oh, wait a minute. This is my absolute uh -oh. favorite. Uh-oh. Here we go. <laughs> this is my girl right here. We got from Mud to Millions, Miss Aisha Selden. Man. Let me tell you, she is phenomenal. Aisha needs no introduction. She really needs no introduction. But let me tell you how crazy it is. Like, you know. I'm like everybody else on social media, we just connect. Mm -hmm. And Aisha, Aisha was just one of those people, like we just connected, like I love raw conversation. Mm -hmm. And to see her grow over the years and share her story and come from the mud to millions, but also encourage people without no filter to do the same, it's, she has such a cult following. I got people asking me about her on the streets. Hey, yeah. you know Aisha? Aisha's I'm like, amazing. wait a minute. And then to see her just you, fulfill her dream. Yeah, she's killing it. You know, I, I love the fact that she got the call to come on RNG and she hopped on that red eye from Cali. Yes. And was here the next day and she did not hold nothing back. She never holds back. She, she gave this audience on camera and off camera the business. Let me tell you one thing about I love about it. She don't she just she she's just not about to sugarcoat. Nope. And I think that that's a you know, I'm like that too. <laughs> mm -hmm. I get a bad rep for it, but I just I just appreciate brutal honesty. You know, 100%. And I think sometimes a lot of people, it's a group of people that need that brutal honesty so that way they can start investing in themselves. Agreed. Let's see what she had to say. So look, let's go into this clip right now. This is our girl from Mud to Millions, Aisha Selden, when she fell in love with real estate. <laughs> in love with real estate as a teenager reading Toni Morrison books okay like and it's crazy like if you go if you've read Toni Morrison go back and reread her she like way ahead of her time this woman in Sula and Song of Solomon was talking about the importance of land and ownership and owning shit mm. like it's 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 crazy like the the characters that we looked at um the the father in Song of Solomon he was he was he was a he, like he owned properties like he and he was looked at like the town asshole um, but owning land was so important, and they lived at like the top of the hill that they called the bottom, right? If you know Song of Solomon. And one of the things she talked about, and Tony wrote this book, like Miss Morrison um, wrote this book back in what the early 70s, mid 70s. She talked about how black people who lived at this on top of this hill wanted to get out of the hill because they wanted to be down in the valley where white people were. Mm. And they were so pressed about getting out of land that they owned, and then they moved down to the valley finally. But then the land that was the most valuable was up in the hill. Right. So that's when I fell in love with real estate, like just hearing as a 14, 15, 16 year old, this woman's on to something. Right. She never disappoints. She, Aisha never disappoints. She never disappoints. But it's true. Gentrify your own hood. Gentrify basically. your own hood. Like yeah. that's basically what she's saying. Think yeah. about it. When everyone was in the metro cities, in the metropolitan cities, what happened? A lot of us left, a lot of, especially black people, African-American people, minorities. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they wanted to be in the suburbs and live this certain life. Absolutely. And look what's happening now. 
everybody from the suburbs, now they're migrating because quality of life is so important in this stage of life. Mm -hmm. So they're migrating back to the city. So you sold the land that was the most valuable to go out. And now we call it gentrification because now you can't get back in. Absolutely. Look, Ooh, and, it's a lesson and, in that. And for Aisha to understand that at a young age, 14, 15, 16, I know when I was that age, I wasn't thinking like that. I wasn't reading no books like this, first of all. <laughs> like all. me personally. <laughs> like I was outside. You I know was what I'm saying? Outside, but that just that goes to show her phenomenal brain. Absolutely. And how her mind works. And that's why she is where she's at right absolutely, now. You absolutely. You know, she's in a position of wealth because she, at a young age she recognized, wait, wait a minute, there's a different way, there's a different lifestyle. Yeah. Even though I'm from the hood, I live in the hood, this ain't regular, and this ain't I, normal. What I love most about her is most recently um, on social media, right? Mm -hmm. She was kind of putting out a letter like, you guys, my content has changed because I've changed. And I yeah. commented back to her, you're supposed to change. Enjoy the fruits of your labor, Aisha. You've done your job. If they want to go back to 100 posts ago, they can see where you are. But because she's in L.A., mm -hmm. built her dream home, living her dream life, after she's done the work, she deserves it. Yeah, I mean, Jay-Z once said, if you want to hear my old music, you know, watch, listen to my old hits. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, if you want to hear the old stuff, go to the, go scroll. Yeah, but allow, like, I, I, I love the elevation. Now we're speaking, because now she's not, she's, she's still, she's still Aisha. Yeah. you can see it's a little softness to her. And the softness comes from, I've grown, and I see, she sees her people growing with her. Nah, that's, Aisha. That's important. She's elevating the culture at yes. a whole different level. Yes. Powerful female investor. We love yes. to see it. I love to see you it. You know, love to see it. Need to champion, our, 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 especially our black queens who are out here investing. Definitely yes. to Shout champion out to them. the women. Shout out to all the women I mean, investors. Y'all out here killing it. Because they doing it. They out here killing it, these women investors, man. Yes. I love it, especially the queens. You know what I'm saying? So yes. keep it going. Shout out to Aisha. And um, look, so we're about to go into another clip now. This is one of my favorite episodes, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely one of my favorite episodes of all time. Um, my brother, sure. Beyond Win, run the fucking play himself. Yes. Um, episode 14. Look, you guys got to watch that episode first and foremost. There's so many gems in this episode. It's too many gems to But me. But let's... Um, let's I want to just get to it. Let's get, get to it. Because one thing about Beyond, he didn't... He didn't hold anything back. Nah, he didn't show that. From Cleveland, Ohio, he has all these properties, and he's he really broke down the market. But he also gave us a lot of just knowledge. Yeah. Just real wisdom on this. How episode. to get your kids so, into the business, the everything, whole nine yards. It was beautiful. So let's just check out when did Beyond fall in love with real estate. <laughs> Mm, mm. So it wasn't about, uh, I didn't look at it like I was dating real estate or trying to, you know, build a relationship with real estate. What attracted me to real estate was the money. And so from, you know, my former business, pharmaceutical business, uh, I knew that I was done with that or I was going to die or go to prison for life. And so real estate, when I was introduced to real estate, it was the closest thing to the money that I was used to making. So that's how I got involved in real estate. Man. So it was either trap or die, basically. Right. Yeah. Period. <laughs> Period. He was just so cutthroat. You got to let that one play. Period. Beyond was just so cutthroat. Yeah. But again, the common denominator is using the money you generate from real estate as a tool mm -hmm. to gain freedom. Gain freedom. And, and, on, and in his case, it was literally and figuratively. <laughs> if, right? it, if it makes both sense, right? That's his, one of his lines, too. If it makes both sense, then right. do it, right? Run right. the fucking play. Yes. And he's still not in love with real estate. Nope. It's dollars and cents. And look, that's okay. There's right? nothing wrong, There's that nothing wrong with so it. He's so caught up in, I got to be passionate about everything yeah. I do. If his passion is making sure that he <laughs> generates an income and have a has an income that's comparable to the income he's used to. Yeah. That's a passion in itself. You don't have to love real estate to use it as a tool. Hey, but like he said, he was in a different line of business, pharmaceutical sales. Ah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he had to find something to match that fly. Yes. And real estate was that match my fly. I don't have yes. to be trapped or dying out here. Yeah. I could be Absolutely. trapping with these houses and selling these bricks, 
you know, the other way. The other way. Let me tell you, you know? that, was, that was a phenomenal episode. Absolutely. You guys got to make sure you go back and check that one out. That was great. Trap or die. We should have named die. that trap the we trap or die. Trap die. <laughs> <laughs> but shout out to Beyond Win, man. He killed that episode. Yes, and as you can hear, he ain't in love with real estate. He in love with the dough more than you know. And that's all that matters. I love the dough <laughs> more than you know. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. All right. So let's go to our next guest, right? Yes. When did you fall in love with real estate? Look, from the hoods to the heights, Miss Pam Brown Courtney. Look, this woman right here is amazing. Pam did. Let me tell you. Pam, Pam is that her, shit. For her to say she was nervous, she yeah. was comfortable. On she, was, she was comfortable. And I she, thought she was about to kick her shoes listen, off at one point. Me too. I thought she was about to. She, she, she preached a sermon. Absolutely. And it was so heartfelt. And it was so honest. And what I love about it is she tell, the way she told her story mm -hmm. and she motivated and the way she made sure that we have to understand that community, crowdfunding, and other people to believe in a bigger vision with you is how you catapult forward. Absolutely. Pam is um, God sent, man, to the community. You know, she's one of our elders. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And she came out here and she represented, although she was super nervous. Um, she, it didn't show. It didn't show. It, it, it on didn't top show. Of that, we, it was like, it was comforting because we were so excited to meet her. Absolutely. That I think that she didn't recognize the power that she had of like just yeah. people really wanted to The impact her. that she's having. She she's a definitely having a, a huge impact to see someone do what she did is phenomenal. Yes. So and look. she looked good. Oh my Pam gosh. Pam looked good. Pam looked good. Pam looked good. I, I was like, wait a minute, you how old? Yes, Pam looked good. Black don't crack, baby. You yes. already know what it is. So look, <laughs> let's take out this clip from episode 12 with Pam Brown Courtney and when did she fall in love with real estate? <laughs> Uh, 16. I was 16 and I first love, first boyfriend, and uh, I was a girl from the hood, straight from the hood, just a poor girl, and he was middle class. He was middle class and his mom and him had money, and I started dating him and going over there, and I said, where y'all get all this money from? She says, I own real estate. I own a motel, I own houses, I own wow. condos, I own property. So I was like, okay, I I'm going to figure this out. Here we go. Freedom. 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 And understanding that you can invest in real estate and still keep your full-time job. I think that we forget that. You know, I'm all for entrepreneurship, but I think that no matter what, whether you work a full-time job or not, you still need to have something of your own. Look, it's showing you leverage your W-2 to create that passive income. Correct. Your W-2 is your first investor. It is. Right? And then you use that money to create your passive income to give you the lifestyle that you really want. And at an early age, and look, like we said, Pam is 60 plus years old. So right. So we're talking about this is probably in the 60s. Yes. 60s, 70s when yes. she was growing up. And even then, real estate was still real king. Estate. Real estate is going to real always. Estate is king. It is we king. Trump everything. No, that's a hundred percent fact. Real estate. Let's keep everything. let's keep it real. People are always looking at everything else, but you got to look at long term. Long real term. Estate, real estate trumps. You always need a place to live. And it's tangible. It's you can go touch it. Markets up or down, it doesn't matter. Yes. I can still go touch the bricks. It's it's my bricks. It's my bricks yes. for the rest of my life, and, and then it's my family's. Important. So this was um, a phenomenal episode. And it talks about exposure. I think that we we mm -hmm. forget that exposing. Um, you know how I always tell people there's a fine line between um, motivating and boasting. However, her being exposed to a family that had money, being exposed to a family that were getting new cars and sitting down and having family dinners, it, it, it piqued her interest. So I think that we all have a responsibility to say, you know what, when we share I bought another property or we share that I made this, prop this profit after this investment, it's not boasting. It's representation so we can show other people what's possible. Absolutely. That's what I got from this episode. 100%. Amazing episode number 12 from the hood to the heights with Pam Brown Courtney. Make sure you guys go check that out. It oh, was yeah. a phenomenal episode. Phenomenal. She, and she built 51 homes, single family homes in a community which she rents them all out. So phenomenal episode certified gym dropper. The family that she met actually mentored her. Mm -hmm. And that's a very rare find. And you yeah. know what she talked about in this episode is how she was able and available to absorb the information. At a young age. At a young age. And a lot of us don't want to do that. Like she understood the, that she needed to be a student of the game. Mm -hmm. 
She needed to be there for this woman, do whatever she needed to do to learn the game. Real estate is one of those things you definitely need a mentor. Oh, it, yes. it, will, it will alleviate a lot of issues in life and Absolutely. a lot of problems and save you a lot of money, even if you have to pay someone. Agreed. In her situation, it was free. It was you know her boyfriend's but it was time. parents, but it was time yeah. that she had to put in to learn. So even if you can get someone for free, if you got to pay, it's well worth having Absolutely. a mentorship. All right, guys, so in this next clip, we're going to... Um, show you my guy Chris Senegal episode 24 phenomenal episode you know Chris is buying the blocks and building them in Houston but this is when Chris fell in love with real estate <laughs> About a year after I got out of college and I got that good corporate job that everybody told me I should get mm -hmm. everybody said be a doctor lawyer engineer I thought I was taking a shortcut because engineer was four years. Where did you go to school? Southern University. Shout out to Southern University. Best University. HBCU in the country. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. I'm not going to debate this right now, <laughs> but okay. Keep continue. Yeah. So I got in that corporate world and I was like, man, I'm making this amount of money. I'm doing this. My boss ain't happy. My boss's boss ain't happy. I've been sold a dream. So mm -hmm. I started reading books. And when I realized that I had to get out, real estate just kept coming up over and over and over. It's a great way for first generation of wealth to be created. Okay. He's really buying the blocks, building one block at a time. That's a like fact. Like the episode was phenomenal just to hear how he used, like he was able to fund, use owner financing mm -hmm. to buy an entire block and he's continually to buy, to buy the block, right? Yeah, he's buying the block, using seller financing, he's doing crowdfunding. Yeah. He's doing all these non-traditional ways, you know. And he's, he's really smart because he understands, like he's seeing what's happening ahead of time. So to tell people, look into underdeveloped areas. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're going to these city council meetings, making sure that you understand what's coming up so you can be an early investor. Absolutely. That's gonna save you a lot of money and you'll have a lot of equity if and, you invest in the right areas. And that's why he's the mayor of Houston. He's the mayor of Houston. He, shout out shout to Chris. Shout out to Chris. Y'all, you guys gotta make sure you check out that episode. Look, go watch that right now. Last but not least, we have <laughs> someone very special, <laughs> our brother Julian Gordon. Now, if you don't know who Julian Gordon is, go follow him right now on Instagram. Julian is a very special in a special type of way. Yes, in a special <laughs> type of way. We yes. gotta love, we gotta love hate relationship. It's mostly love. Mostly it's mostly love. love. It's the single family versus multifamily. Single family versus multifamily. <laughs> yeah. We, we could bump heads all day. Well, he really hates HGTV, and that's why I like and him. And I'm a looking lot at too. him like, but I love HGTV. <laughs> Let's I don't, talk about about it. Yo, Julian, man, is one of those special type of people that um, he's rare. You know, he's definitely one of those one-on-one -on -one people. And um, check out this clip, man. This is when Julian fell in love with real estate. Actually, it was a love-hate relationship because I saw my mother lose her single family home. And this was someone who was a doctor, um, but she ended up dealing with some mental illness and depression and uh, lost her license, therefore lost her income, therefore lost that home. That home that I grew up in, in Oakland, California, uh, on Trestle, off of Trestle Glen is actually worth one point. Shout out to the Bay Area. Yeah, yeah. it's actually worth 1.8 million now and it's gone and it will no longer be in my family's name. And so uh, that was actually my first introduction to real estate and how it worked. And that's why, you know, I've kind of been anti single family home for a minute. Wow. That, was a, that was a single family. That was a single family obviously and so um, that was my introduction to real estate and so immediately I knew that I wasn't going to buy a single family and of course later on in college I bumped into Rich Dad Poor Dad read that book and knew that I was on the right track and then I got my first multifamily in Brooklyn um, in 2013. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. That's Sorry big. to hear about your mom. It's all good, man. Yeah, she, never, she's all right. I never heard that story. Yeah, but you know, I've been able to take care of her because of multifamily real estate. You know, I've, oh, I bought her a, a duplex, which makes sure that she is actually taken care of by the tenants on the other side because her income is nowhere near where it used to be. So. Powerful. Let me tell you. That's why he hates single families, Kiana. I understand the, the, <laughs> the premise. However, one thing I love about Julian is he's honest. Yeah. He's very honest about He didn't him. have to tell nobody that and shit. And he's staying he strong. He's staying 10 toes down on his move. That's a fact. And that's one thing about it. No, you know, there's many ways to skin a cat. And even though we have a love-hate relationship, I respect where this brother is coming from. I respect what he's doing for the culture. And he's coming from a place of experience. Absolutely. Because wherever there's hurt, healing. Absolutely. There's, there's some hurt that happened there. Absolutely. There's always healing. Always healing. And there's he, and it's a healing he's doing through his multifamily. Movement. Yeah, so no. I see it. And and when he said that, 
uh, as we taping this live, I can, I'm like, I'm getting a flashback because I'm like, damn, I understand why he's the way he is now. Yes. You know, why he's so passionate. If you watch your mother go through depression, go through everything she went through, lost her li license to practice medicine, and then lose your home. Lose your family. Lose your family yeah. house. That's huge, right? That, that could have made or break him. Exactly. Right? That could have brought him to the streets of Oakland or... Maybe. To where he's at right and, now. And the man he is right now. Yeah. Like what I and what I love most about this part is he understands, okay, you're gonna you you wanna invest in multifamily, fine, but you have to leave your region. Absolutely. He's not stuck to one space. Absolutely. See, he had a multifamily in New York, he wasn't living in New York. Nope. He said he has another multifamily now in California, he doesn't live there. Mm -hmm. And so he is he understands to get what you want, it can't always be where you live. No, hundred percent. And that's something I like to preach. Make sure you guys shout it. Go, go to Julian if you want to find multifamily. You know how I feel about it. We can help you, but the budget is different in Atlanta. The budget is definitely different in Atlanta. <laughs> but look, it, this, that was a great, powerful episode. Julian went through so much of the multifamily movement of why he's passionate, yeah. how to analyze these deals, you know, 33 signs of gentrification, all these yes. different things that he went through and he broke down in this episode. So make sure you guys go check out that episode from Julian Gordon. All right, guys. So that was a, uh, that was a great trip down memory. It really memory was. Lane. Like we we have grown up. Yeah, we've yeah. gotten way more comfortable in front of the cameras. I people yeah. had a lot of great things to say. Yeah, I can tell you. I what I take from all of these episodes is you ain't gotta love real estate to invest in real estate. That's a fact. Because a lot of them don't love it. Yeah, they just love the dough. Beyond want the money. Well, there you know. Plain, plain and simple, and I'm not, and I'm not mad at that because we love the dough too. Exactly. But, you know, one of the things I took away from it, it, it starts at home. It started at an early age, and freedom is kind of like the common theme from all of these investors and you know attorneys that everybody wanted freedom. But you know, beyond freedom, what I saw was. You don't have to leave your nine to five. I don't. I think that there is a reason for everything. Mm -hmm. Everybody can't be the boss. Somebody has to work the job, right? But understanding that you can use the income from that job, from that corporate position, to invest in your own wealth generating vehicle, which is real estate. Absolutely. So look, we're gonna wrap this up. Um, happy holidays, first and foremost, to everyone. Yes. We really appreciate you guys' support. Be safe during this holiday season. Um, don't drink and drive, you know, all that good stuff. And um, you enjoy know, the time. And with enjoy your the family. time with your family. If you, and, and while you're with your family, put rants and gems on repeat. That is Let a it fact. play while you're cooking. Let it play while you're while, cooking. While you're cooking and you're just cleaning and getting your house ready. We just played you several multimillionaires that said it started at home. Exactly. I'm just saying. So you need to play this for your family. And um, yeah, we'll see you guys in season two. Season two coming soon. Huh. We got some shit coming. It's going to be lit. Don't play yourself. <laughs> see you later. Peace.